Hello everyone, this is Caitlin and today we are making an 1860s black silk evening bodice. Alright, let's start cutting. If you've not seen the making of the day bodice that goes with this ensemble, I will link that above. But essentially, um, I basically decided to kind of do that but with a low neckline. I think that makes a lot of sense. And since I trimmed the skirt to match the day bodice, it's going to need to kind of go with it. So, trimming with black velvet, I've decided to basically make this dress a blank canvas. So not really doing much trim work at all. I'm only going to do a little bit of velvet on the sleeves. Um, we're going to do a single puff sleeve just like the original day bodice. We're just not going to do the lower coat sleeves on it. And of course we're going to make the neckline... Um, itself lower on this gown to make it an evening gown. So I'm going to try to stylistically make it similar. I want this to kind of be a blank canvas. That way I can really trim it and spice it up with however I want. If I wanted to wear a fichu with it, if I wanted to leave it plain, um, I could make, I could eventually make a bertha because there, there will be a little bit of fabric left over. I can make a bertha um, eventually down the line. I could have a uh, just a neutral bertha I could wear with it. I have several fish shoes. We're going to be making a few more fish shoes. Here comes the cat. She likes the silk a lot. Um, but, so yeah, there's going to be lots of um, options with this gown. So I'm just going to cut it basically very plain. We're not going to trim it a whole lot. We're going to basically make it a blank canvas. Ilara, you're going to have to move. Because I'm going to start cutting. So I have here my basic bodice evening pattern, which is what I use for all my evening gowns from the 1850s and 60s. It's basically the day bodice just, you know, with the neckline cut out. So it um, doesn't really require any fitting if you're doing this first time. You're going to need, of course, a mock, you're going to want to make mock-ups and that sort of thing to make sure it's going to fit you. Because I make gowns a lot, I know what fits me and this pattern works really well. I know exactly how to make it up. So I'm not going to bother with a mock-up. The only, the only thing I'm changing with this gown is my pattern. I don't have a single piece back for my evening pop bodice pattern. I have a three piece back. Well, the original was a one piece back and it just took out little darts or tucks to kind of make it look like a three piece back from the outside. So I just kind of pin these pieces together um, because we're overlap of course overlapping them to make that seam allowance, but essentially it should work. Let's go ahead and mark this um, tuck we're going to take. Here, let's make this real easy. Let's just put the side pack piece over top and fold under. Actually, I kind of like it like that. We're going to do it even without the seam allowance. This is fine. These weren't exact anyway. And that way, this will be very easy for me to replicate on the other piece. Because that's what I struggle with, is getting both sides to look exactly the same. And that way, from the front side, it looks like a three-piece back. However, I didn't have to do any crazy curved seams or anything like that. And I'm not wasting seam allowance. It's literally just the tiniest little tuck. It doesn't really affect your fitting too much. I have originals that have a true three-piece back, and I have originals that have a faux three-piece back. Um, haven't really done too much research as of right now into what was more common. Um, I do both on my reproductions. It kind of just depends on the day and what I'm feeling like doing. I prefer the faux three-piece back like this because I find it easier. Sometimes cur curving the seam and not getting any puckers can get a little hairy. The only thing you have to worry about with this is making sure you're catching both life layers, the front and the um, lining as well. So it's one of the things when people look at originals online, they go, oh my goodness, she matched that plaid on that curve seam. How does she do that? She's so talented. Nine times out of ten, it's just a faux, it's a faux piece back. Like, these people were smart. They weren't necessarily great seamstresses all the time, but they were smart. Here we go. So that's ready to be sewn. I'm going to finish cutting my lining here. And this, we may as well go ahead and put darts in. 
Now this is going to be a much deeper curve. It's going to come in like this. I like to do my darts before I cut it all the way. So I purposely make my pattern piece far too big. That way I can cut it down once I'm ready. So darts on 1850s and 60s dresses are slanted. They're not straight up and down darts. So I'm going to have to measure. So like this is currently right around two and three quarters from the edge here at the waist from the bust. It's right at five inches. Darts are in. I'm going to finish cutting the lining for the puff. I am also going to cut because the original had tarlatan lining. Um, I don't necessarily want that for this evening gown. I think I'm going to do a tarlatan interlining and then um, line it with the Silesia and face the little bottom ruffle bit with more black silk. That way you don't see the lining or the tarlatan um, in this particular gown since it's an evening gown. So yeah, there are my darts in the front. I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting out lining and we can start putting this thing together. So here we are with the darted bodice. I marked where I need to cut this, and I'm going to go ahead and do so. Alright, I can sew those four seams. I'm also going to iron the center backs back, I suppose. So for this particular gown, I'm thinking about doing um, hand-done eyelets, um, which I like doing those. And um, yeah, I thought that'd be really nice to do on this gown. I don't have a lot of those. Usually I do hooks nice, but I think it's just as easy to do hand-done eyelets. I like doing them. Um, they usually look pretty good. I have plenty of black silk thread I can do them in. And so yeah, I'm going to have to um, fold these back the same amount. So usually I would leave like one less done so it can overlap, but this time I won't have to worry about that. I'll do them the same amount. I think it's one and a half inches. I'm going to have to check my pattern just to make sure, but um, if that's the case I can fold that back and we'll go ahead and do some eyelets as well. Alright, so with the bodice sewn together we're ready to put in boning. So I have my little bones here. I'm using steel this time. Also one here. I had to put in a channel here. I forgot about earlier. Put in this boning. This bone. You can also bone that second set of um, darts, but I usually choose not to. And then we have steel in the center back. So there's the boning all in the bodice. So at least that's done. We're at the point now where we can work on piping. So I need to make some piping. I have all my I have all my bias here. So all I need to do is make piping and we can go right ahead and bind the neck, waist, and arm size. Alright, so I'm here working on piping. Lots and lots of piping. Just I'm at the point now where I'm just whipping the piping edge to the neckline. And I'll about and I'm about to do the same to the waistline as well. I have the piping already there, I just haven't um, whipped it to the edge. But yeah, this is just... We're at the point where we get to do hand sewing, so... The only other machine sewing I get to do on this is the sleeves. Everything else needs to be done by hand, so it's really just working on the piping and then um, eyelets. And we'll make a tucker as well. Which we'll probably do tucker first, since I'm already working on this neckline. Get the neckline done, and then we'll do um, eyelets. Alright, I think we're ready to work on this tucker. So I'm going to go ahead and even this up. This is just cotton netting. It's a very fine cotton netting. It's much finer than um, you can usually find. A museum quality reproduction is usually what I search for when I look for this sort of thing. And we're going to need a strip that's, my neckline's 40 inches 
long, so about 40 inches. And I think I want a one inch tucker, one and a quarter, somewhere in there. I think a one inch tucker. Put it one and a quarter. And I need to double it because most of the tuckers I've seen so far have been doubled over. And so one and a quarter plus one and a quarter. So I ordered from cottonlace.com all sorts of lovely, um, well, insertion lace for tuckers, really. It's really the length that I use this for. So essentially I have to find the right side to this lace because there is a right and a wrong side to lace. Looks like that's the right side. And on the top folded edge, this is the edge I folded down, I'm going to pin this lace and I'm going to make a very simple tucker this time. So it's kind of the name of the game for this gown anyway is simple. Let's make a simple tucker. So like I'm not pleating this, I'm not gathering it, I'm literally just doing a plain piece of um, netting and just hand sewing a little bit of insertion, there's going to be no lace on top, just very, very simple. So I'm going to start from the top here, I'm going to put my knot underneath, and I'm just going to sew with a running stitch, the very top. Use your attach to attach all three layers. Kind of moving my lace to where it is going to be exactly even with the edge of the netting. And once I get over the top, I'll do the same thing on this bottom here. And we will have a finished tucker essentially, and we'll just attach to the edge of our neck line whenever we get the eyelets put in. I think we're to the point where we can work on eyelets for this back. I'm gonna start with an awl here. Look at wherever I want the eyelet, which I think is about, I'm going to start them right here. I haven't measured them out yet, but I know I want to start, you know, the starting point's always usually the same. The goal here is to not break the fiber, so you don't want to cut them, you're just moving them to the side. So you get a hole in your fabric, which is what you want. I'm going to take my thread, this is a silk thread, I'm going to go on the edge, and I know we've done eyelets on the channel before. And you're going to do the buttonhole stitch all the way around in a circle. And if you need to, if your fabric starts messing with you, you can go push the eyelid a couple more times or the awl. And that way it'll open that up. It'll open that hole back up for you. And you just go all the way around and you have a little bound eyelet. And I find these work really well. Um, I have issues with buttonholes, but I don't usually have issues with eyelets, which is strange because it's the exact same stitch. So my eyelets usually turn out looking fairly decent. You know my buttonholes look like a two-year-old did them. So with the tucker sewn, we're ready to put it into the bodice. And this is kind of like a collar where it's not put in with any skill, it's just kind of tacked in. I'm going to kind of do it within that piping underneath. Of course, you don't want this to just steam from the front side. But really, after this, it's sleeves and we're done. Like machine, machine sewn products don't tend to take as long, particularly when they're 1860 stuff, and I know how to do those. Step one on the sleeves is going to be sewing the side seams together. So I have the silk and the tarlatan lining, which I cut a little bit shorter because I don't want to see the white tarlatan um, where the little frilly part is. So yeah, I'm just going to sew right down there. I'm thinking since the bottom part's going to be seen, I should probably fell the seam, um, which I'll just do by machine. At which point I'm going to fold under these edges so they match exactly where I want it to, um, that to end. And I have a little lining piece that's um, <clears throat> brown cotton, just because um, I don't think I want the tarlatan next to my skin. It's very rough, and I think it'd be very irritating. Uh, the original had just a tarlatan lining. However, the original was set over top of a uh, coat sleeve, which of course had a brown cotton lining. So it, the, car the tarlatan was not near her skin. Um, so I think that's the choice I'm going to make. And I cut the lining of the brown one shorter so it'll keep the puff as well. 
I was concerned about this flattening itself on my arm and not looking very puffy um, because on the original, of course, they had the coat sleeve to keep everything in place. So I think a shorter lining to kind of keep this puffed up and we're going to get to attach that in a little bit, but I am going to need to run a running stitch, a little gathering thread across here and um, I might as well do it across here as well so that we can get the lining put on. So we are here working on sleeves and I'm nearly done hemming them. And so what I did is the original um, that we kind of are working with, we're just making an evening version of that original gown. Um, her puff sleeves had a half inch, usually like three eighths of an inch. I think that's what I used, somewhere between three eighths of an inch and a half. Uh, ribbon that is folded over um, and that's how she hemmed the little ruffle bit and then there was a quarter inch wide ribbon um, to hide the seam here so that is what we're going with I just attached the ribbon a quarter inch from the edge um, did a running stitch and then I turned it to the back which is what I'm doing here so you can see my stitch line here from you know halfway up the ribbon and just folding it back over on itself and doing the rest of it And this binds the edge effectively, and it's trim too. Now I did make my tarlatan end up here uh, for a couple of reasons. The original actually had it going all the way down, but because this is an evening gown and there's not going to be a li other lining per se to kind of hold this for my skin, I didn't want this next to my skin. So I did, again, put it up a little bit but that's giving me a good line to where to put this other lining fabric all right so now what I have is a hemmed sleeve and I did do the other sleeve already the tarlatan is quite stiff stiffer than the original tarlatan by a little bit not by much um, it does make the sleeve quite crunchy and I thought maybe we should do something about it. However, since it's 160, the original is 160 years old, so it would make sense that some of the starches come off. So I'm not going to be really worried about it being stiff. Um, it certainly makes a puff. So, you know, I think it's fine the way it is. But now I have my lining piece, which is how long the sleeve is actually going to be. And we're going to mark the center of both these crunchy sleeve, as I'm calling this, and the lining sleeve on top, and we also need to do it on the bottom. And I did have to make my normal sleeve a little bit smaller, I guess, um, because I wasn't going to put an under sleeve under this, I wanted this just to be the sleeve. I did kind of have to work around that, but it worked, um, I think, just fine. Alright, so what I did first is I just matched the tops and gathered the top fabric to match the lining fabric. The gathers are not wanting to really disperse themselves very well because of how stiff all this is, but I mean it's working and it worked just fine on the other sleeve. I like it. It looks fine now. It just took a lot more effort than I was expecting. Now if you are doing this type of sleeve, you don't have to put the tarlatan in. In fact, I do have a later 1860s dress. It has a high neck but a um, short sleeve, so it may have been a dinner dress of some kind. Um, or it may have just lost its lower sleeves at some point. But it has puff sleeves, and it does not have tarlatan. It just has a um, cotton lining and then a puff over top. And now with all that pinned, I'm going to go ahead and stitch this on by machine just to give me some sort of stability so I don't have all these pins here when I'm working on this whole situation, which kind of takes a little bit of effort. And here is our sewn sleeve. I turned it inside out. And I am currently working on taking these raw edges of the lining and pinning them in just a little bit. Just so we don't have any raw edges that are going to ravel. Even though it's mostly on the bias, it shouldn't ravel too much. It's not quite on the true bias because this is, is not a straight seam. So you want to make sure that you're hiding those. There we go. And I pinned this part together and I found the centers and I pinned those together. So now I get to take whatever my little um, basting threads went to and pull them very carefully because the tarlington does not like to be gathered. 
and when you break it, it is not fun. Alright, that's the long one. That's not the one I need to be pulling. There we go. Okay. Yay. So that's done. Now I'm going to take it and just kind of do some basic stitches just to attach it. I don't remember it being such a pain last time. But you know what? I know why it wasn't a pain last time because I dyed it to black to match the original closer and it took out all of the starch and basically made it like cheese cheesecloth. Like Charlotte is basically cheesecloth that's been starched. And so I had to restart it a whole bunch of times, but never got quite back to the stiffness it was. And that is why I didn't have trouble with it. Random threads everywhere. And I can turn it inside out. And there's my very poofy puff. Mm -hmm. A little ruffle at the end. So now I get to put on my trim. And here's the finished bodice. Um, I am a sucker for black evening gowns, honestly, so I am just super thrilled with how this turned out. Even though it's super plain, it turned out really, really well. Um, it's not laced up all the way in the back. Um, my laces felt like they were breaking, I was pulling on so tight. Um, even though it still would fit, like it could still go further in, it fits. It's just, it was hard to pull the laces with these sleeves, trying to do it one-handed. It wasn't working, so it is mostly laced up, but I still have the space back there to lace it all the way. Other than that, it turned out really well. I even actually got one of the laces back here for the tucker. I could pull on that one. <laughs> so it kind of actually did the tucker slightly. So it actually is fitting the way it should fit. So that's awesome. But yeah, very plain, but it's a good versatile gown. I am very happy with it. Um, it goes with all of my um, evening headdresses that we made on the channel. So like, <laughs> I had a hard time choosing. Um, I did go up with this one, the blue one with the yellow flowers, which I do like because like, they like move. One of the ways I would accessorize this gown uh, would be use a fichu, and I have one that has blue ribbon on it, so I was like, oh, this will go with that. So like, let me show you the fichu real quick. It's kind of wrinkled. I didn't, have, I didn't feel like ironing it, but essentially, this would be really good for um, like dinner wear or that sort of thing. To the further back, just to kind of cover the shoulders. We're going to make some more of these. I have more cut out. I just haven't actually made them up yet. And I've been known to like pin this in place right here so that it stays. Oops. Just being a little, oh, that's just because it's not iron. Okay, there's a giant wrinkle down the middle of that one, but that's okay. That's um, how a fishy works. And it looks really good with this gown. So that would be one way I could accessorize it. I can always just leave it plain if I wanted to and not have to wear anything with it. But uh, this is one easy way I would accessorize this gown. I'm going to take this off. Oh. So that we can actually just see our handiwork that we did. It actually really didn't take me very long. Just a couple of days. And honestly, most of it was doing those stupid eyelets. Um, I like doing eyelets. The black on black was hard to see. Um, usually I use, I've done it only in like lighter colors, so the black on black was a little bit more difficult. They worked, I mean they hold up, it's great, so it's done. Um, but yeah, I'm very happy with how this gown turned out. It's been a while since I've made 1860s gowns, it seems like I've been doing mostly 1830s lately. It's kind of nice to be back in like a full corset. Um, I have missed the structure of 1860s gowns, and I have um, I missed the smaller sleeves, even though these are giant poofy ones. They are not nearly as big as the 1830s ones, so I am very happy <laughs> with how that turned out. They are crunchy though, because of the tarlatan, which is kind of fun when I move. But um, as I kind of get worn in a little bit, I think the crunchiness will at least partially go away, which will be helpful, but it does stand out very well. So um, they're not overly poofy, I would say. I think they look acceptable for this gown. But yeah, very happy with how it turned out, and of course the skirt that we made 
um, months and months ago. It has its little velvet on it. And so the two rows of velvet match the two rows that are on the sleeves. And yeah, that is essentially this gown. It does fit off the shoulders, which I wasn't really expecting. I use the exact same pattern that I always use um, that still fits me. Like I can pull out the 1850s gown that we did the darts with and that doesn't fit off the shoulders and it's the exact same pattern. So it's not like my body has changed any. I don't know what I did different. And it also could be that it's sitting off the shoulders because it's not all the way laced up back there. And I can, like I can actually still um, feel that it's loose. I can still pull out some of these laces. I am having a hard time lacing myself partially because I kept grabbing my corset laces, not the black laces. It was hard to differentiate back there. And so I would like pull one corset and then one of the black ones and just wasn't working out very well. I needed someone else to do that for me. But yeah, like there's another, like it's still lacing. I can still pull on pieces. So it fits, it will fit. Someone more talented than I are just gonna have to get me into this though. So <laughs> um, I tried though. Now there's like loose laces everywhere. Shouldn't have pulled on that. But yeah, that may, this may be fixed. But it's not bad off the shoulder. So like there were evening gowns that are off the shoulder. So it's not unacceptable. It's just not what I was expecting. So I am very glad that I got this done because now this black dress is completely done. Um, my filing system and the costume closet. I have little yellow note paper stacks of like listing everything I need to do on each gown. And so this is when I get to take off the yellow note and that will tell me that the gown is completely wearable. So yay. <laughs> And there's nothing wrong with the day bodice, like we just made that a couple months ago. It's just that I needed to make the evening gown to go with it. So, yeah, uh, if we ever wanted to come back to it, we could always make a Bertha for it. But I really like it plain. I really not... I, I like Berthas, but I really don't wear them very often. And I don't usually make them. I kind of like the plainer look. Um, and then just like self-trimmed, if I do trimming. But I really like plain evening gowns. Like, I kind of just suck her for that, but, you know. Um, I don't know why. I used to love the really frilly, froofy, like, Bertha's and just the craziness of, like, the 1850s, and as I've gone, and as I've gotten a little older, I've kind of really started to enjoy the plainer side of things, which is interesting, um, how that changes, but, um, still kind of like the 50s, though. But other than that, um, project turned out well. Um, that's really all there is really to say about it. I'm glad I got to kind of get dressed up. Um, got to do my 1860s hair again. I was just thinking while I was putting my hair, I was like, I miss this so much. I miss doing, and I hate doing my hair. I'm not very good at it. It actually turned out really good today. Um, I didn't put any pomade in, so it's kind of like falling out, but, um, it actually turned out pretty good. Uh, but I really don't like doing my own hair. I'm not really good at it. It's not a skill of mine, but even like, <laughs> I was getting my hair done and I was like, I miss doing my hair for this, and that's sad, <laughs> like, for me to miss doing my hair, because it's usually my least favorite part, I really miss doing this type of thing, so definitely need to go see what's out there, um, probably not very many evening things, simply because evening wear is usually confined to indoor activities, because it's dark outside, and that's not something that's happening right now because of the plague, so, um, probably you can get more used out of the day bodices right now than the evening bodices, this is a plain verso bodice. So thank you so much for joining me on making the black silk eating bodice and getting our black silk adventures wrapped up. Um, I will see you in the next video.